coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. The FAA seeks new drone advisory group members. The U.S. Forest Service seeks info on drones to create prescribed burns. And new foldable drone flies through narrow holes in rescue missions. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm your host, Skylar Vanell. The FAA posted a notice in the Federal Register looking for qualified candidates to serve on the Drone Advisory Committee. The committee provides an open venue for the FAA and stakeholders to identify and recommend consensus-based resolutions for issues related to integration of UAS into the national airspace system. The notice explains the responsibilities associated with the DAC membership and the desired qualifications for the participants. Typically, DAC members are at the level of CEO, COO, or other high-ranking positions. Members come from a cross-section of stakeholders representing UAS interests, including industry, research and academia, retail and technology. The DAC, established as a federal advisory committee, advises the FAA on all the needs of new and expanding users of the NAS, while identifying the strategic regulatory priorities and structure that simultaneously promote innovation, safety, efficiency, and rapid UAS integration. For those who are interested in applying, the FAA must receive nomination packages no later than 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 9th. Selected members will serve for at least two years. Coming up on the Unmanned Minute, we'll take a look at stories that are making the rounds in the unmanned vehicle community. British police last week arrested and then released without charging a man and woman in connection with a drone scare that shut down London's Gatwick Airport just days before Christmas. The two were arrested about five miles south of Gatwick Airport and were initially not identified by authorities. However, media outlets released the information despite the law in the United Kingdom. Libel lawyers in the UK say that the couple have a strong case against the media outlets who release their names and personal information. A judge has determined that an insurance company is not liable for an injury caused by a drone at a wedding back in 2016 because of an exclusion against injuries caused by aircraft. A lawsuit was filed by a woman who lost the use of one eye after being struck by a drone owned by California-based Holly Cow Production. In the countersuit, the U.S. District Court in California ruled that the company's policy includes an exclusion for bodily injury or property damage caused by an aircraft. Australia's Civil Aviation Safety Authority plans to roll out new drone monitoring equipment at major airports across the country early this year. CASA Communications Manager Peter Gibson said that the technology has matured to a point where a drone can be identified, along with its serial number and the location of its operator, making it easy to identify who is flying it. Australia plans new drone registration requirements in 2019 and along with new technology this year we will see crackdowns on drone safety. If you live in or around the Raleigh, North Carolina Triangle area, you should know that the city has implemented a new drone policy. Flights by drones weighing less than 400 grams are allowed at all city parks, but they are prohibited at nature preserves, lakes, wetland centers, and cemeteries. Drones weighing more than 400 grams are limited to parks specified in their posted policy. Drones weighing more than 15 pounds or capable of flying more than 70 miles per hour require special permission. That was a look at our Unmanned Minute. Now let's get back to the news. Drones may be soon used to help fight fires by request. This won't be the first time that drones have been used to create prescribed burns. Back in 2016, researchers from the University of Nebraska created such burns by dropping ping pong sized ignition balls in a demonstration of its unmanned aerial systems for a fighting fire concept. 
In a year when fires have raged out of control in places like California, the U.S. Forest Service is requesting information from the industry about using drones to create controlled burns to help fight forest fires. The prescribed burns, are also known as hazard reduction burning, is used to reduce the amount of fuel available to a fire. The RFI, which has a response date of January 25th, may also include a live demonstration of an aerial ignition system. According to an RFI posted on federal business opportunities, such a demonstration could occur between February and May. Any UAS used in the demonstration should be able to create ignitions in a set pattern by using droppable plastic spears or similar devices. A research team from the University of Zurich has developed a new drone that can retract its propeller arms in flight and make itself small enough to fit through narrow gaps and holes. This is particularly useful for when searching for victims of natural disasters. Researchers from the Robotics and Perception Group at the University of Zurich and the Laboratory of Intelligence Systems at EPFL are the brains behind this new technology. Both groups are part of the National Center of Competence in Research, robotics funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation. The new drone can squeeze itself to pass through gaps and then go back to its previous shape, all while continuing to fly. And it can even hold and transport objects along the way. Well, that wraps up our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Don't forget to like us, tweet us, and subscribe below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you here next time.